Hey YouTube, it's Ken here from Think Trade Profit. Welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, I wanted to go over my layout. I still get a lot of questions. Um, and I haven't done one of these in a long time. So this is the layout I use as of August 2021. So this is what I'm using right now. A lot of these things, um, if you're not new to the channel, if you're experienced with Active Trader Pro, some of this might be a review for you, but I thought I'd cover uh, some of the things I've kept for more than a year and just some of the, the new kind of mindset and reasons behind my layout and the way it is the way it is. So let's jump into it. So first of all, I float my windows. I get this question a lot. Um, if you float your windows, and that means all of these elements in the layout, you can get a lot more out of your screen space. You can spread things across multiple monitors. So what do I mean by that? Floating your windows, this is the kind of the green menu bar that comes with Active Trader Pro. Um, I take everything outside of this and I hide it somewhere else, either on a second monitor, behind my layout, wherever. So for example, going to charts, here's my list of charts. You can have as many chart kind of styles or saves as you like. I cleaned this up a while back. I only use kind of a couple of the same thing. One of these is kind of a line chart. So I have a, a pre-market line chart. Let me float this when I talk about float. So I have these basic ones and sometimes uh, some of my layouts have these on a separate screen and I just want to know, hey, what's going on in pre-market or what's going on during the day. I want a quick, simple, easy chart to see where price is at and what kind of action it's had. So that's one kind of chart, but feel free to, to save many different styles with different indicators, with different drawings and trend lines. Um, you can save as many as you want. They're saved in the cloud. They're not saved locally. So that's what I mean by charts and floating charts. So for my current layout and with the charts that I have here that you see, I have a five minute chart and a one minute chart. I don't spend too much time looking at the one hour anymore. I scalp, I'm pretty much on the really short term time frames. So five minute, one minute, if I wanna change something, I can change it here by just um, making a change here and changing that selection. You can't see it behind my picture, but there's one minute, five minutes, 60 minutes. Or I could change it over here if I wanted to change this chart and mess this up. But I like to keep my one minute the way it is because this has got the indicators that I like to use on it. So the two main indicators I still use are ATR, average true range, and I use a 14 period on a one minute. And I use this to help me configure my stop loss. I've talked about this in some other videos, but this is where at the open, obviously the ATR is higher. You want a wider stop loss and maybe a smaller position size as things calm down during the day. Um, I tighten up my stop loss and maybe I can have a bigger position size, but that's what I use average true range for. That's really the only thing I use it for. I want to know the volatility of the stock. And obviously the first 15 minutes, half hour of the day, things move a lot more. So you got to be a little bit, you got to, you might have a different stop loss than you do during the regular day. The other thing that I've really stuck with for more than a year is Williams percentage R. So Williams percentage R, you can find that underneath indicators. Let me show you where that is. Oh, I'm sorry, it's on the it's actually on the chart under indicators and you go down here to Williams percentage R and you can pull it up. And I use a 14 uh, period on that as well and I just use it on the one minute chart. Williams percentage R helps me kind of define the a good entry price. So I'm looking for a really good spot to enter. Um, this is kind of a um, a momentum oscillator over bought over sold kind of indicator and it allows you to kind of find a good entry inside of a mini trend so let's say the stock's going up and it has a strong pullback and maybe it's an oversold pullback for that time period you'll get um, something on the Williams percentage R here so going back uh, to volume notice I don't have any volume on my charts I stopped using it. I'm not saying it's not useful. If you're a longer term kind of trader, um, it's definitely interesting to see who's in control and, and more buyers than sellers. But for me in the short, short time periods, there's so much high frequency and algorithmic trading. I'm really looking for who keeps coming back to the bid or the offer um, and what's printing on the tape right now. I'm really concerned about my entry and then my exits, I'm a little bit more patient with. I don't really wait for volume indications to get me in or get me out. It's all about price. So I don't have volume on my charts. So those are my charts at a very super quick peak. Let me get that out of there. 
Um, down here, I have a spy and a Q, QQQ. So that's what's hidden behind my picture here. Um, I use these mostly, I'm just using them as overall market sentiment. I have them up here on the watch list also, but sometimes I like to see, hey, is SPY sold off really hard or Q sold off? Are those, you know, do they have potential for a bounce or something like that? Here I have the orders window. So this is really important. The orders window, you can find that here. Let me drag that up for you. So go to trade and orders. and the orders window. And again, you can float that as well. So I have it tucked in here and there's a reason I have it where it is. It's really close to the direct trade window. The reason being is I wanna be able to see my execution price without my eyes having to go very far. So as soon as I get a fill, I can see it right here and I can go back to watching price over here. Um, let's do something here real quick. One thing that you should have on your orders window is the column that says action. And the reason being is you can cancel with a single click over there. So I move this uh, sell short limit price out of the way. Here's the new order. You can see it right here. And then you can cancel from this window too. So I like these close together. You don't have to go far with your mouse. You can be really fast. So the next thing to look at is I do have stock shortcut keys. So these you can build yourself. Um, you can make them custom. And those are in settings, directed trade. And go to stock shortcuts. They have options as well. Uh, these are mine. So I have like short ask and it's actually um, sell short, eliminate the offer. I have buy to cover the market. This is just the way I like to trade, the way I like to get in and out. Usually I'm using a limit order to get in. I use a market order to get out, but that's where these are set up. And, and you can set up up to six for stocks, and then you can set up some for options as well. So I have those, and those allow me to quickly fill in the directed trade window. All right. Um, this is an open positions window, so open positions. So if you go back to trade and order, I'm sorry, go to accounts and go to positions, that'll open that. That's currently what do I have open. I use um, unadjusted purchase price as one of my columns and I use unadjusted gain and loss. And that'll give you the, the real time kind of action, like where you bought it, the right basis. There's a lot of different columns to choose from in here. And these are the ones I get a lot of questions on. How do you know, like, how does your basis get computed correctly? So use open positions, unadjusted pur purchase price, and unadjusted gain loss. So the next window I have is the closed positions window. So you can toggle this, it can be set to all kinds of different time frames. I use the day, and again, that's up in accounts. And closed positions, and that'll pull up one of those. You can layer these. Um, I kind of layer all these windows on top of each other to take up some of the dead space. So I have the watch list kind of hanging over that. I have this hanging over the open positions. Um, then I have the directed trade kind of on top of that. But you can tuck these behind each other to make it compact and fit a lot in on one screen. So that's closed positions. And then these are watch lists. So these are configurable. You can add and remove columns. You can edit the stocks and everything that are in them. You can rearrange them and organize them. They don't have to be in alphabetical order. And you can have many watch lists. Uh, here's a bunch of them that I have here. Some of these are kind of messy. I haven't cleaned these up in a while. But right now I just use two. Um, and I kind of bog them down with the stocks I'm watching um, and the indices I'm watching and then a couple more stocks that I'm watching. And then I have all of that on one screen. I do use a second screen. It's not very exciting, but it has a lot of those mini charts, the charts that I showed you. So I can watch a bunch of different other stocks. So I can have like six of these little mini charts and I can have them kind of strewn on the other second window. I also use the, um, the filters. So go to quotes and watch lists and click filters. And that pulls up this big giant window. You can float this as well. I like watching NASDAQ most actives. Um, but I have that on a second screen as well. So that's basically it. Um, once again, obviously this big green thing, you don't have that in your layout, you hide that somewhere else and you're ready to go. There's a lot of different kind of opportunities to create interesting things. I've done multiple directed trade windows before with smaller charts next to them. 
So I think, I mean, you can do as many as, as your computer and your video card can handle, and you don't need a powerful machine. I've run this on a uh, this layout on a really kind of mid-tier old Dell laptop before, and I really don't have any issues. Really, the biggest thing you need is is uh, fast internet. Um, but you can do a lot of interesting things, and I encourage you to experiment a little bit. With layouts, they're saved in the cloud, so you can't trade them. I get that question a lot too. Hey, can you share your layout with me? And I wish I could, but they're actually saved on Fidelity's side um, in the cloud. But you can create many different layouts and save them. So you can see here's some of my main ones. I've cleaned this up, but I used to have a lot more here as I experimented and built it, built different things. But I just have my main one and a backup. I have a laptop one and some other stuff that I was playing around with. But just save your layouts, save them liberally, and experiment. Um, try some different things. I've had, like I said, I've had as many as maybe four different directed trade windows open at once with little charts next to them, so I could really see price and price action on on like four different stocks at once. Um, obviously, you want to have some of these things linked to other things. So charts and directed trade can be linked together. So. Once I chain here, it changes both of these charts. These charts are unlinked, the SPY and the QQQ. So those change with it. And you do that by using this little thing here. Oops. And that's how you link charts. Sorry, I've got some stuff blocking this, but you can do it up here too. You can put them all in a group. And then when you change, you get the changes up here. So that's really it. The only thing that I've done lately um, from a very short term time frame mindset, and maybe this will be helpful, is I've changed the questions I ask myself so I can filter out bad trades. And what I do is I use the higher time frame. And I really, the question I don't ask, I don't ask myself, what is the trend anymore? Because what I found was I was tricking myself into trades, forcing myself to answer something when the answer wasn't very apparent. So for the higher time frame, I ask myself, who's in control? Who's in control right now? So this may be a downtrend, but you can see all this here. Who's in control right now? I'd say oh, the buyers have made a little bit of a turnaround. So who's in control? Then what's a good entry? And this is where I use the Williams percentage R. Um, I try to find pullbacks. Um, going with those that are in control. So let's say this is technically trading up right now. I try to find pullbacks in here where I might be able to buy. And I'm not saying that, that I would make this trade. And lastly, um, I ask myself, where's, where's a good stop loss? If I can't answer those three questions easily, I just don't put on the trade. So who's in control? What's a good entry? And where should my stop loss be? And that's pretty much it. And that helps me filter out a lot of bad trades. What I found myself doing, especially when I was overconfident, having a really good day, was I would force myself to answer these questions like, oh, the trend's up. Uh, this seems like a good price and I think it's going up. And I would get lazy. So this is, I pay attention to the higher time frame, this five minute chart a lot more. And if I'm not trading with this, I just won't take the trade. Likewise, if, it, if the range is really wide, and I don't know where a good stop loss would be, I don't take the trade. Um, some of that would be like, maybe in the open here, there was just some really big candles. I don't know where the stop should be, especially when you look back at where it was trading before. It was so up, <clears throat> and I would say the buyers are in control, but where would I place my stop loss? It was really hard to figure out. So when I <clears throat> can't answer those questions based on what's on my screen here, I just don't take trades. So that's how these help me. A higher time frame, a lower time frame, Williams percentage R, ATR plays into the kind of this the size or the placement of my stop loss, but I should be able to answer those questions easily. So that's it. That's what I'm using as of August 2021. I hope that's helpful and I hope it answers some questions. Um, but yeah, a lot of people have asked me if I have problems with lag or if Active Trader Pro, Active Trader Pro is slow, and I'd say no. I use um, a Windows PC, I don't use a Macintosh. I've heard bad things about Macintosh. But on Windows, you can see this is not slow. It's not, um, you know, it's not laggy or anything like that. So I hope this is helpful and it gives you some ideas of kind of how to branch out and try new things. Um, like I said, you can have many different chart styles 
and you can have many different layouts. So experiment, go in there, play around and try some different things and see what works for you. So with that, I wish you the best of luck. Be careful out there, protect your profits as always, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much.